Hey, how's it going, everyone? It is Drigia, and we're back with another chapter of Fairy Tale 100 Year Quest, chapter 165 Five Fairies. And I love that the cover page for this chapter is kind of a multi part cover because obviously you get Natsu and Happy pranking Urza by drawing on her face, which she was not very happy about, and uh, she's about to make Happy and Natsu's day a lot worse. I just love the absolute terror that Natsu and Happy have on their faces knowing they're about to get like whacked by Urza. It's just super cool to see Natsu and Happy pranking someone once again. It's just kind of cool to get a multi-part cover. So we pick up the chapter at the Magia Dragon Guild and you get the seal that has all the dragon gods crests on it glowing. Obviously because all the dragon gods are once again active. And most of what's said here doesn't really uh, have too much importance, to be honest. But I do kind of love that you get that crow talking again. And literally everyone in this room kind of forgot of this crow's existence. And honestly, everyone seems mostly annoyed about this guy. Like, dang. But to Natsu, this doesn't really matter too much. Just because he's like, well, we already beat all these dragons once. Like, we can beat them again. And that's where you get Elfseria literally saying, you beat these dragons but their power has increased and they're probably at their true power level now compared to when you fought them and they were underpowered. And that's not the only problem you're gonna have to deal with because each area that one of the dragon gods is at has a giant lacrima that is also turning people into dragons. And honestly, the only decent plausible theory as to what they could do to stop people from turning into dragons is by Lucy, which she literally says that, yeah, what if we destroy these lacrimas? Would it stop people from turning into dragons and potentially turn them back to normal? And also it could stop the dragon gods from going into their frenzies. And with there being five of them and five dragon lacrimas, Natu decides to split everyone up, but he almost forgot about Ferris, which I never thought I'd see not to call Ferris a baddie. That was not in Natsu's vocabulary, at least that's what I thought. I don't feel like this is the greatest idea because Natsu literally wants everyone to split up and they'll destroy a lacrima apiece. Very similar to the Arashio and Seis arc at the end with Nirvana. And I'm shocked that literally no one, and I mean no one, is opposing this except for Elfseria. Now I do absolutely love the group page of them all saying let's go. It's actually very similar to literally what just happened in the anime with them going to fight Merkphobia. Also a thing I completely forgot to mention, and this is in some of the previous chapters as well, Lucy and Wendy are in brand new outfits and I particularly love Lucy's new outfit here. Also looking at this panel, it also kind of looks like Gray's almost in a new outfit too because he's got a fur coat. Which is where we cut over to Ferris and her demons. And she's honestly just explaining her goals like she did in the last chapter about what she wants to do in the Dragon King Festival. Destroying both humans and dragons. Which is where you get the introduction to all of her demons. Because this first page of introductions you get a character that must just be the living embodiment of Sherry. Because he's talking about love. I'm sorry if I pronounce any of their names wrong. I'm going to guess it's Gaia, Diamond, and Bird. And to be honest, the only one I really like the design for on this page is Diamond. Because honestly, I think the other two kind of look pretty lame. But who knows? We'll see what their powers are. Did not think we were going to get Blade in Fairy Tale. Which this is honestly like that meme that's like, I want Blade. Well, no, we have Blade at home. And this is Blade at home. So you get the introductions of Blade and Gate. Which I almost wonder if Gate almost has some connection to the Celestial World. Because he almost has like a Capricorn, Aries, Horns. And obviously the name Gate. Like does he have, you know, Celestial Gate keys. And the final member of this demon gang is Zero. Which I was not expecting to get Zero to return. And to be honest, that last chapter when I said this looks like knockoff guild arts. I mean, you don't really get the greatest look at him, and to be honest, uh, this is all in black and white, so, you know, it's kind of harder to tell. But I suppose it makes sense that you get Zero coming back, because it seems like any time we get, like, a demon arc, you always get, like, one person that was a human 
that they turned into a demon. Yeah, genuinely does not shock me that you'd get zero wanting to become a demon. And honestly, the very similar Arashio and Sace name for all these demons makes sense completely now, since you have Zero, the leader of the Sace, literally part of it. And at least you do confirm that this is actually the legit Zero, because they literally said that's Rich coming from an ex-human. And he very much still has his very not nice personality. And he still does have the motto of, as long as I can destroy everything, I don't care. It is weird to see Zero say, and I owe you my life to Ferris. Which, yeah, that definitely was going to be him probably being dead right after when Cobra attacked him. When they were going into the Tartaros arc. So I suppose then Ferris found his body and just bring him back as a demon. And out of Ferris's demons, he's really the only one that doesn't really want to follow any kind of order. Because he literally says, I'm not following anybody's orders, I'm going to do what I want. Which with Ferris's end goal, it doesn't really matter anyway, because she wants to destroy all humans and dragons alike. Zero really does not care, because he's like, when the job's done, I'm going to destroy you guys as well. I do really like that Ferris uh, says that she likes that side of Zero, and she has such an evil smirk on her face. Which Ferris has honestly a great way to get Zero incredibly hyped to destroy everyone in this fight. She literally tells him that Fairy Tail is going to be part of this battle. And oh gosh, that like creates a PTSD within Zero's mind that Fairy Tail is once again part of a fight. Which I imagine his magic is going to be completely different from when he was in the Sace arc. Just because now he's a demon, so it probably has some demonic benefit now. Because obviously, like you look at Minerva, her magic did change as well. We cut over to Lucy, and she is going after Merrick Phobia's Lacrima. Which just that city is just getting completely obliterated. It's actually kind of fun that in the anime we're also in the city at the same exact time. So kind of fun that the manga and anime are both taking place in the same exact city fighting the same exact enemy. Which is where you get Lucy attacked by all the villagers there and they're all turned into dragons at this point. And they're not maybe like full-size dragons, but they're like definitely like humanoid dragons. And they definitely have zero chill whatsoever because they go attack Lucy pretty much immediately. And they cause quite a bit of destruction. They completely destroy the wall that, you know, they attack Lucy by. Which eventually has the ground get destroyed and Lucy falls underground. Which literally underground is just a bunch of water too. Which is where Lucy runs into a dragon version of Carmeel, and she's going to be Lucy's opponent now because she's saying whoever targets the water god will answer to me. Her compared to the other previous villagers, yes she's dragonized but it doesn't seem as complete as the villagers before. And with that it is the end of our chapter, so my thoughts. A detail I completely forgot to bring up, I think this is the 100th chapter I've been covering in a row, so that's pretty cool that uh, I made it this far. Now my main question is with them splitting up to go after these lacrimas, and it clearly is shown that regular people can be turned into dragons now, did Wendy place an enchantment on everyone to protect them from this? Because if not... They're on a ticking clock to them turning into dragons. Because, like, is Lucy going to potentially turn into a dragon now? Because she definitely doesn't have, you know, anything to potentially avoid that, I guess. And then secondarily, um, how is Lucy going to damage anyone here without Dragon Slayer magic? Because theoretically everyone here now is a dragon, so I don't know how much of an effect her magic is going to have. And yes, I'd say her star dresses, particularly Aquarius and star dress mix, will help her out a lot, but who knows if she's even able to deal damage. And that could be a very bad problem if Lucy starts turning into a dragon. I mean, it actually could help her out significantly if she's able to control it in some way. 
but that even goes for the other members like Urza and Grey, like what are they gonna do? Even Natsu and Wendy actually could fully turn into dragons too because they already had the dragon seed inside of them even though it's destroyed they potentially were going to fully turn into dragon so you actually could get full dragon form Natsu and Wendy this arc I think it's pretty stupid what they did splitting up here because literally everyone could not defeat a single dragon god without the help of the group and I severely doubt, even if you destroy the Lacrima, that all of the Dragon Gods will just immediately back down. So I'm more than willing to bet that someone's going to have to fight a Dragon God by themselves. And they really should have gotten back up from the Fairy Tale Guild and additional guilds to help them out in this fight. Because really, it no longer is about the 100 year quest. Like, this is a global threat if they're trying to turn literally everyone into dragons slash fairish trying to kill everyone the dragon king festival is not something to be playing around with like this is a very high level threat that they need to deal with either way i think the stakes are still getting raised higher and higher with now regular people being dragons and going berserk adding additional threat level but i still just think team fairy tales decision to just solo each one not a great idea i think there is going to be some problems that uh they're not going to be able to solve because they don't have any backup so what are your guys thoughts on this chapter leave it in the comments below thank you for watching and this is drago signing out